And we're live. Good afternoon. This is the Nifty Alpha. I'm Pio. I'm here with my co-host Nifty Nick and the sophisticated art speculator now known as Captain Kicks. And this is the NFT market and trade talk show where we dive deep into the different trending stories and NFTs that are making a splash in the space right now. In this particular video, we're going to share how each of us have made money flipping NFTs, whether it's small amounts, large amounts, and everything in between. As always, this is not financial advice. This is just our experience, your NFT purchases can go to zero and they frequently do. How's it going, gentlemen? Absolutely fabulous. Absolutely right. fabulous. Great day to be so, alive. So let's dive in directly into uh, each of our backgrounds in the NFT flipping space. Let's do uh, it. You go first, Nick. No, I think you should start. <laughs> I was going to go. I'm on the wrong mic. I was going to go get the right mic cord. Okay, go get the right mic. I will start. I want them to hear my buttery voice as I share my story. Excellent. My so the way that uh, I got involved in this space uh, was I spent a month and a half doing research. Started with a podcast, did some research, eventually ended up uh, buying um, a art block is my first item. It was early on. And the story is not uh, that uh, in inspiring outside of the fact that the key takeaway was do, do some research identified the biggest opportunities and I went from art blocks to board apes to a couple of other items and it ended up uh, working out very well. So that's my experience with uh, flipping. Since then, I've done more degenerate level flipping, which we'll dive into later. Uh, Pio, what's your background? Yeah, so my background is I got started in February on Nifty Gateway. I got in early enough where if I had had a trading and flipping mentality, I would have done very well. I, I diamond handed all of my stuff through the bubble bursting on Nifty Gateway and it led to a shift in my thought process and opened my uh, mind to the idea of actually selling things for gains versus diamond handing everything. That diamond handing mentality came from long-term investing in Bitcoin and Tesla. And now I've been participating much more in on the trading side of things in the NFT space. Captain Kicks. Love it. How buttery do I sound right now? You sound great. You sound great. Fabulous. Yeah. So similar start to PO started on Nifty Gateway, rode that wave, made a little bit of money, had a lot of fun trading there. And then bought a little sandbox land and then and then took a took a break for uh, until the epic Board Ape Yacht Club bull run, which our co-host NFT Nick got me on, aped in big on those, and then just had a blast with the the mint season that really started, you know, this this whole journey off for a lot of people. So got in gutter cats, bonsais, um, and just had a great journey along the way. Got to hold on to a lot of things at one point in time. Had a couple punks, flipped those. Got a big sale on Board Ape Yacht Club, but. Um, Really, really minted and flipped most of my gains um, ever since May. And so what percentage gain would you say you had? I can tell you mine. I went from about 20,000 to as high as a million, probably down at 750,000 is right about uh, where I would value it at at the moment. Um, well, like you don't need to say the numbers, but at least like what percentage uh, returns did you experience? Very high. <laughs> 15x. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So 1500%. So in terms of uh, something that's important, I think, for setting the context around all of this, is there's seasonality to this space. And we've gone through just in the past 10 months, we've gone through a couple of key phases. The most obvious is up, down, but we, we end up using the term mint and, fl mint and flip season. And maybe we can like discuss real quickly like what that actually is. Like, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, definitely. So mint and flip season is where a lot of the price and the action, the price appreciation and the action is happening on the new projects coming out. So usually mint and flip season means that the blue chips really aren't moving much. The mid chips really aren't moving much because of that, because there's not big price appreciation in those projects people kind of crowd the new projects and try to find the new projects that could really take off. And so that's mint and flip season because there's a lot of money to be made minting the new projects that everyone wants. And there's a lot of money to be made just getting in and out of projects, quick flipping. 
So basically, if you're someone starting with a uh, a, a bag that you're willing to risk it on, th well, there's also uh, a separate, there's one which sort of, uh, there's macro seasonality to it as well, which is for, so those are min and flip projects. And then there's buy and hold projects. And throughout both of these seasons, in mint and flip season, minting and flipping is going to give you the highest returns. Uh, otherwise, outside of that, buy and hold is actually going to work if you can find great projects that are worthy of doing that. And buy and hold season is when you hate yourself as a mentor and flipper. Because then you mint and flip something and it's a cool cat. And you thought you were genius buying it for 0 0.02 and selling it for 0 0.10. And then you watch that puppy go up to 10 ETH. And that the Hello Darkness, My Old Friend song plays in the head. So <laughs> you guys are a little bit better uh, or significantly better buy and holders, I would say. You you guys seem to, you know, see the see the projects that are have a little bit more of a long term horizon. So uh, this video in particular, we're focused on the flipping aspect of it. But Sweet. ironically, uh, I think what how mo each of us made money, I, I made it differently. I. I would put Pio at this moment into min and flip uh, moment. He's been experiencing a lot of gains, actually. Um, and Captain Kicks is also, I feel, primarily, primary gains have been min and flip with the exception of Sandbox Land, which is another area. But let's talk I still about flip most of that. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. But you didn't flip it immediately. It wasn't it was a longer like flip. It was a three-week yeah. flip. There we go. So there's short-term, mid-term. I'm going to put that in mid-term. And then we're going to uh, say long term. I don't know about long term. Dude, <laughs> what is long term in the NFT space? A year? Like if you're outside. If you felt something for six months, I'd say definitely long term. Because most there. people haven't even been in the space for six months. Outside of crypto punks that, you know, may have bought in 2017 and held for a long term. The vast majority of anybody that you hear from in this space has been around for a long time. So let's talk about um, the, the buying aspect of it and how that drives things. And I think it matters for both of these categories, both the long-term and also the short-term. And there's one thing that matters, and that's the price that you buy in. So maybe each of you have some examples of ones, not in the way where you paid too much. We're going to get to that in a second. But how have you approached and what have been some examples of sort of cheap entry prices and how that ended up driving the investment, like a large portion of your returns? Yeah, so yeah, I think, kick it off. yeah, I'll kick it off. So it's all about getting in early, right? So if we just look at the activity tab um, on my OpenSea and we ignore anything that says the word croaks in it, um, then you can kind of see some really good, you know, getting in at a good price early and selling for considerably more. So for example, I actually made about 0.35 or maybe 0.4 ETH off of this Puzzle Punks uh, project. It was a free to mint project that ended up picking up a little bit of steam. I uh, minted 10 of them for 0 0.026. The gas was very well optimized, was able to sell a rare one for almost 0.2, went really well. Nuclear Nerds, an example of one that took a couple days to mint out, but right when it picked up steam, it was about 40% minted out. I minted 10, shipped them all off for very good gains, 2x on an, at least every sale, you know, went well into the, into the pump. And then I'd say probably one example that is really relevant to what we're talking about was there were a couple of moments in time in the past few months where Rare Pepe's, which has become kind of like my signature thing a little bit, uh, Rare Pepe's really had their moment on these NFT bull runs where people like Vincent Van Doe and other buyers were really buying them up at a, at a really you know kind of high rate. And um, there's a learning curve to the Rare Pepe uh, NFT ecosystem. And basically just, and I wasn't by any means super early to it, but just being earlier than 80% of the other people that were into Rare Pepe's allowed me to buy this uh, this NFT, the Peckman NFT. I bought a pack of 10 of them for 0.35 ETH. So 10 of them for 0.35. I ended up shipping two to four, like three or four of them for between a half ETH and an ETH. So just a, a proper bag off of those. I could have continued to ship them, you know, for that rate in at that moment in time quite a bit. So I what didn't. Was the price that you bought in? I bought 10 of them for 0.35. So 0.035 each. Okay. So 0.035 is what you're looking at. 
Sh sure, but it's kind of different with, with rare Pepe's, but so I had 10 of them, right? And so I ended up shipping four of them, call it, for between a half ETH and an ETH. So big bag off of that. I traded other ones for other NFTs in the rare Pepe ecosystem. And uh, and yeah, I mean, this is just an example of getting in early to something that had a learning curve early enough that I was get to, able to get an amazing deal and then selling into a pump that was a specific moment in time. And I'm now trying to ship this for point. 21 ETH, so considerably lower than what I was shipping the other ones for, and it's not going so well. So you, you can see that that window is closed to sell it right now. Nice. So, okay, so you got in for this for, I understand there's complexity to it, but 0.03, the other example that you just had was minting, uh, what was the one that you just sold? Nerds. For the nerds. What did oh, you get? Nerds, the, puzzle, the puzzle punks. Nerds were 0.069. I sold okay. them all between 0.15 and 0.2. So we're, so we're talking about an $1,800 flip and turnaround there, which is great. So that's that's a good exit. Captain Kicks, like, what are some ones that you got in? I have one from you, actually, that came to me that I remember being, which you now work at full time. But what are some ones that you got in at just like where the entry price was so important and also gonna, you say that most of them you're gonna love this because i looked up my highest gainer with like the highest amount of eth that i gained the number one was koala intelligence agency koala what? fucking intelligence agency. <laughs> that was in uh august right i made 17 eth off the mint <laughs> 17 eth off the mint <laughs> And uh, it says uh, the realized gain was 1900%. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but the key that that's in peak mint and flip season, aka peak mint and flip. What, what, what we're looking at, and this happens periodically. I don't know when it'll come back, but when you get into euphoria modes, mode, when the, when the market is in a euphoric state, everything you can sell at that moment, it does not matter the quality of the project. Today, you would not go and buy these today at 0.07 you're, because you're not going to get a quick flip on these. I sold um, most of these above one ETH. Imagine that. That's, that's insane. Above one ETH, and I sold one, my rare right one, now. I sold for six ETH. Oh, my God. Um, so and, and real quick, talk about pricing that at six ETH, though, right? Because it's not like someone else tells you to do that. You make that decision. It wasn't an offer. You listed it at six ETH. Yeah. That's such a big part of it is knowing how to sell. And there's a lot of examples in your history of that where you listed it at a number and that was the right number to list it at. Yeah, man. I, I, yeah, I just priced it off of the, the action that the rares were going at at that time. I think it was a, it was a golden one or... There's a super rare skin and it had like laser eyes and something like that. Yeah, so, this was complete degen season. So one thing that's key there to understand is, and and this is an adversarial market basically. So you are literally competing against other people to properly adjust that price. And your aim is, is to identify things of great value on the mint. The mint is the mint and flip. There was an article the other day in Bloomberg about this where they were discussing a lot of the gains are going to quote unquote sophisticated uh, speculators. The name uh, being Captain Kicks. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking and, about. Yeah. I'm and, uh, <laughs> and, and what they were saying, what they were saying, I, I heard that was coming out, had to rebrand. And, and so <laughs> what uh, they were saying is, is a lot of these gains come from that beginning price. And that buy price is so key. So I'm going to give you an example of my own, which is where I got most of my gains art blocks board api club mutant api club um uh cryptodes uh, but i don't want to discuss cryptodes right now because this is this is not in this category i got board apes at 0.14 i got um and that was so almost a double for whoever just minted it maybe a triple for whoever minted it uh i see with um art blocks i just minted that at 0.2 um, or point, point 0.1, some, something like that. I don't remember the exact price. Uh, and so point 0.1, and then that would sell for 8 ETH. Th the key was, and I think what's so important for people who are new to the space to understand is all I'm pointing out, is that where you buy is so critical. The, R the, the return on investment at point 0.14 for my board ape is 
way more than when I bought in at 0.65 which is way more than someone who bought in at one, two, three, four ETH, basically. Now yeah, you you're, made you're talking lot. multiples of appreciation. It, like if you, you bought at 0.5, you know, you going from 0.5 to 50 is 100x. If you get in at 5 ETH, it's only a 10x. I mean, not like only kind of sounds funny, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, 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 still, it's still a ton of money. But yeah, that's the key. So, I, I, but I, the bottom line is, is most of our gains, and I don't know if you all are in the same bucket, but I would guess 95% plus of our gains were all made on that purchase. That purchase price was so key. And because what we'll get into now, which I think is an important thing, is examples of buying at mid-price and where that's worked and where that's failed and what we think our approximate batting average is of Oof. that category. I got a good one and a bad one if you want me to yeah, start go, it off. Let's do it. Yeah. So... My bad one was loot. I bought, uh, I think I bought two loots at either five ETH or seven ETH. Oof. It Oof. got up, it got up to like 12. Oof. And then I went on my bachelor party and at my bachelor party it got up to 20. And I definitely would have sold or like 15. I definitely would have sold one or one or both there because I'm a flipper, but I was away and I come back and it's like down at seven at my buy price. And then it just slowly started dripping and it, and that's the problem is when you buy high, the percent, like the percent gains are, they really, the percent pullbacks, they sting a lot more than if you have one ETH in something, you know, if you make a five ETH bet and you're down a little bit, that's a stinger. So I lost four ETH on the, on the loots, on the loot place. So that was a really big mid play L. My best one was mutant ape yacht club. Mint knows at 2.5 ETH. But, but yeah. you minted them. You didn't. You didn't buy them on the second. I'm not. I'm. I'm honestly terrible at buying things above three ETH. I don't think I've ever had a winning play other than CryptoPunks above three ETH. And, well, and knowing that is key. Yeah. So go. Go. What were you going to say, Pia? Well, what I was going to say is that there's a play like this right now that I've been considering that uh, I. I just. I can't make a damn decision on it, and that's this. Everyone knows this one, right? Doodles. So there's apparently a news event tomorrow. It's getting a lot of hype. The Buy the question, rumor, sell the news. Right. So the big question is, is the news event tomorrow priced in or is it going to be such a big news event that it knocks everybody's socks off? So we're, we've gone from a 2.4 ETH floor to a 3.67 ETH floor. So a considerable, it's actually about 50% increase in the past 24 to 48 hours. And the question is like, if I buy a 3.67 right now, what do I think it's going to literally tomorrow, right? You think it's going to 10 ETH tomorrow? Uh, call it call it a five or six ETH. I could see when when you when you get when you get a run up, uh, it, it it tends to a lot of the mo movement happens in short periods of time. Same thing in the stock market. Stock market is post earnings. You get all of the all the activity within yep. 24 hours. I would yep. say the same thing happens in the NFT space. When hype comes, it comes with a with a vengeance. With a boom. And, and, and you're looking to basically make three, four, five hundred percent during those periods of time. Otherwise, get the hell out because like the, they're, they're, uh, the hype cycle in these, it's just uh, you're muted there, Nick. It, it's it, it's this curve of waves basically that comes and the waves get further and further apart with these projects, basically. So we think these are going to the moon. <laughs> it's I, tough. Did, I, I did do some investigation and I did notice that the. Uh, owners they divvied up their doodles amongst themselves a couple what days ago interesting like, so out, of, like out of the vault they, like they for diversified them. their wallets yeah to like the the members of the team um so maybe they're setting up for something i don't know well we'll we'll find out i mean it sounds like something's going down but in terms of so i have some examples of mid tier did you have uh pio's trying to decide on any in terms of examples of ones that have gone down, I have both gains and losses on this. The two that come to me, uh, Creature World, Cryptodes, are the two that I've, I've bought over uh, one ETH. I think I may have one other uh, that's over one ETH. Cryptodes but, is good. That was so good Cryptodes, I bought at 1.3. It went up to 20 I or 12. It went up to like 12, yeah. 12, sorry, 12. I did not sell. I'm now holding it. It's at three. Yeah, some odd smartly were like, it's going to go to 20 from 12, right? Yep. There, there is another example, um, which was the, uh, when ETH was lower, 
I got the Damien Hurst at one ETH. That was a one ETH mint, but that's a very expensive mint. That's expensive. Yep. So uh, that that was uh, another one. I view that as uh, mid tier. Uh, Creature World was bought at one point three. It went up to three or something like that. Went up to four. I, a four. I sold at one point eight five. Same I got identical there. right here. And, identical. And and so uh Yeah, and also what you kind of spark something for me that there's there's a huge difference even from a one to two ETH buy versus like a four or five ETH buy. Because it's like how many projects are above 10 ETH right now? You know, that have sustainably held above 10 ETH. So if you're buying at five or six, you're hoping that it's literally like the next board ape. Is the board ape the only other project that's clearly sustained a break past 10? It's been punks. Yeah, punks and apes. And apes. What are the other ones? I mean, some have breached it, but they're they've since retraced underneath. Four cats did cats retrace. Toads, uh, toads breached it. Cryptoads did. Those are the only ones. But not um, no one else has broken and stayed above the ten eighth barrier. There are smaller but, projects that I, I'm talking like standard, standard, big size, fatty. Uh, no, no. not above ten eighth. Um, the the if if you all have an example of a mid tier one. Uh, that you wanted to toss in there as well as it applies to also Creature World. Um, but I want to jump into, uh, after this, we can discuss indicators. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, another one. Uh, so yeah, Creature World, I participated in that identically. Um, I mean, Cryptodes, I just bought it on the secondary and it went down, right? So that's an example of a fail. Not Cryptodes, sorry. Uh, croaks, Croaks. And um, honestly, I can think of a bunch of other examples where I basically bought the top and it went down. And that's obviously not good. Um, in terms of like things that go up, it's like if you bought a board ape at three ETH, even though it's so much money, it, it worked out pretty well for you. So I'd say there are instances where buying high can work out, but they're few and far between compared to the instances where buying high is going to get you wrecked. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say is in terms of buying mid tier croaks failed on that uh i'm thinking of additional ones that i fomoed into uh lonely lambo club or whatever the heck that one and that lonely was a free club. mint like you you never should buy a free mint on the secondary and like uh, in 0.1 percent of examples does that work whale it's basically game. a rug yeah so uh whale game is another one the littles another one uh i have a list of these basically where it goes on and on as to um you know, some of these types of projects. Uh, and basically the lesson from that is if you're buying at the, buying at the right price is key. If you're buying on a pre-reveal pump, 99% of the time I have lost my money. So those, the, that's where I, f I put that category of saying, Hey, oh, yeah. you usually I, I'll, do I'll go out and make a, a bold statement that I think would hold up mathematically. I would say secondary buy, so not including mints, right? Because like minting Mutinate, the Op Club, I made some big gains there would skew it. But just secondary buys, I think that I am 100% net negative. No, yeah. I, I think that 80% of my gains have come from buys below 0 0.5. Maybe 90% of my gains have come from buys below 0 0.5. Yep. I, I basically all my gains have come at least below one ETH outside of cryptodes. All of my gains have come outside of uh, one ETH or less. So basically, if you're trying to make that cash, you better be swinging in the minor leagues. You better be, not be up in the major <laughs> leagues trying to hit. You need to be down in the minor leagues at that point one range looking for those those swings up to point three, you know, getting those getting those hands warm. Real quick, uh, Captain Kicks bought Crypto Dads at 0.8 or something like that and flipped them for two. So there's an example between a half ETH and one that worked out. Yep. And one last thing to say on this. In the art space is the one area where you it seems like you can buy high and sell higher. That yes. said, you need to understand the macro environment of the market that you're operating in at that moment in time. And when negative art trader here reporting in. So when you look at like, um, I look at art blocks had quite a run there. Quite and, a run. And there were a lot of people that bought in at one, two, three, four, five ETH and above. And uh, now a lot of those are way down. I include squiggles in one that I'd love to buy. Those were at 0.35 and then ran up to like over 10 ETH floor basically. And uh, 
what a lot of people say is most of the gains accrue to the people that are at the top. Um, I think that's mostly the case. It's also a very, very illiquid space to be operating. There's a smaller pool of people that can buy you out. I prefer much more to be buying at the bottom and selling. If I have a panic attack, I want to be able to sell it in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there's way more people to buy sub one ETH or less. So let's get into the indicators real quick, um, which is uh, I wrote uh, down five different things and what we're all looking for. And maybe we can mention if there's anything else that you're looking for. But uh, the first up is timing. Um, when you're buying these NFTs, and I'm wondering uh, as to when you all have made most of your gains, the post reveal, definitely sandbox for Captain Kicks. But I'm wondering, uh, you know, how would you say is mint time the main time to buy? Um, but how do you think about the timing? Like what, what, when, when to get in? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, timing's super, super important. I think it depends on the roadmap of the project and like where the project can go. I think for the vast majority of projects, you need to get in early. I really do. I think that like most of the gains come from minting or, or, you know, buying it early on. But then of course there's, you know, exceptions to that rule all the time. And it depends on, because a lot of projects they can't they don't show that strength or that roadmap or that vision for you to for the market to justify it going up higher than the initial hype right most mints right now it's all about the initial hype and the amount that can follow through significantly you know it it isn't the easiest but like if you look at projects like board api club or you know we just talked to nft world on the youtube show um you know when when they keep executing on a roadmap, then you can get that more long-term price appreciation. But if we're just talking the broad spectrum of NFTs, the broad spectrum of NFTs, it's you got to get it at mint or very early on, and you got to ride that hype wave up. So pre-reveal is key, not post-reveal. It sounds like there's two separate times. So this is indicators on projects. So the timing matters. We got before, which is mint, is the time. Yep. The other thing, okay, so now we're looking at... And before and after goes in seasons too, I feel like. Um, like pre and post reveal. Like there was a time in August when you held through reveal at least half your bag because you'd get like a Koala Intelligence Agency or something like that. In this current market, I feel like holding post reveal gets punished like 90% of the time right now. Completely agree. Um, anything else on timing? I think properties is an example of that, right? Where the top on properties was a quarter ETH. I do personally think that it'll bounce back. We have like an, a, new, a news event this weekend and stuff. But if you sold your whole bag at a quarter ETH and then now you're looking at the floor being what it's at. You could sweep back probably, down and still come out profitable and free roll it. Yeah, you'd be pretty pretty happy if you sold everything at a quarter ETH. It was, it's like a two and a half, three X from what you minted at. And that was within 24 hours. So good job. Good job. Sold a 0.56 there. Um, wow. that's what we call a dinger dinger. That's what we say is thanks Jesus. Cause that's the character that I got there from, um, uh, the Brazilian Jesus statue. So, yeah, and, and real quick, uh, shout out to Ryan Sutherland for tipping that cash. And, uh, I see that, you know, Micah G I thought it was the, the real Micah G, but then I noticed that it wasn't the real Micah G. So I don't care about his comment anymore. Go ahead. Thank you. So, uh, additionally we have, so we have five categories that I'm looking at and I don't know if there's any others to me. I had the timing, the team, yep. the art, the hype, uh, and then the type of project. Basically, those are the five that I have. I yep. don't know if you all have. Those are great. I think we go through those. But so, okay, we just hit the timing. How are we looking at the team? I definitely have strong opinions, but uh, what, what are you all thinking? I, I think that um, teams are important, but not the defining characteristic of, of, this, of all successful projects. So I think like teams are important, but what I mean is, is that if some projects, if you just judge them early too hard in the team, you may have, you know, it, it's not an absolute for me is what I'm saying, but it is important. Okay. So you don't care about it. I mean, I see a docs team uh, being more important. I can give examples Here's of this. Here's the thing. Where, docs people uh, steal money all the, like, or, or like, like do nothing for a project they mint and then they just pull their money. So just examples. So if I'm investing in a team, I'm thinking of artifact 
is one aspect of it where they had experience and background in the digital fashion space pre-NFTs. And then I also think of some of the artists that uh, P.O. But like, what was Board Ape Yacht Club's origin? And were they doxed out the, out of the gate? They no. weren't. That was also a key. It's just an indicator. Yeah. That team, you literally would have had no idea. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, it's a weight on the scale. Like, it should weight your overall conviction on a project. But like, if the team weights low, but like the art and the other stuff is really good, it can offset it or like the type of project. Or Anonymous people with high quality art can can, can uh, work out really well. Pio, you got any thoughts? X copy. X copy is an anonymous person, artist that has really good art. I mean, look, when you're evaluating the it's team, like if you factor at this point in time, I'm thinking of like Smiles verse or something like that, which yeah, participated so in. Smiles verse, you know, that's a doxed artist. You kind of, you know, the artist's story, like, you know, he's like an immigrant and you know that, you know, it's like the American dream kind of story. He values his family, you know what he's into, like hip hop and things like that. So th I, I like that. I like to know about that stuff. If you minted Smiles verse or you bought it early, it was a massive win. You know, it ran up to one ETH, right? So you had that opportunity. Um, another one that I think of, you know, would be something like, I mean, even like Deadfellas, right? It, like the docs team, you can kind of look into the background. Oh, Dusk Breakers is a really good one where if you minted Dusk Breakers or you bought it, you know, early on the secondary, like when it was still minting, you had an opportunity to basically buy it at mint price. You know, it has this team that has this background and that generated a lot of hype. And I believe that that ran up to just under a half ETH or right around a half ETH. So again, you had an opportunity to, to get out for a big profit, like a three, four, five X profit. Um, so it, I, that's, that's kind of the play with Doc's teams. Yeah previous track record, industry experience, things like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to pull up any of those projects, uh, yep. then feel free. But so, okay. So we have the team, the art. What are we looking for here when we're looking at the art? Quality. Thank you. Next, next subject. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but seriously, hype. like, like quality, like high effort, you know, quality art, you know, like there's different styles. Like this style is totally different from something that you'd see in a museum. But I don't think anyone's going to say that this is like low effort, like piece of crap, right? Like I think that'd be kind of disrespectful. Yeah. And for me, I think it also boils down to um, not just the quality, but the uniqueness or like it's, it's place in the spectrum because like cryptodes, you can't, you can't be like, that's like, oh, that's amazing art, right? You can't say that about cryptodes, but like how that fit into the spectrum, it, it's it's really clean and cool. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that, yeah, like definitely like the quality of the art is important, especially if you're just getting into like an NFT project, like not not like a game or, you know, like V Friends, you know, you may not think that art is good, right? It depends on what it is. But if we're talking about like collectibles and like art, definitely like the you know quality matters but almost but also like the uniqueness because like look at like x copy right like yeah. like it he obviously is a great artist but it's not just like oh it's x copy is great because it's these amazing works of art it's like the uniqueness of his style that in you know originality right originality and, and exactly originality is probably the best word better than uniqueness i'm looking for originality in all Ooh. nft projects which is the hardest thing to do in any yeah. art form, including like, you know, martial arts, right? Like yep. if you come the up with hook, that was original at one point in time, if you Decimated. come up with, with something new that no one's come up with before, no matter what it is, it has some sort of value. Jackson Pollock with his drip painting, yep. Picasso with cubism, yep. Andy Warhol with his pop art. And I mean, X copy to me, is totally original. Like what artists have you seen with this? He went into the 3D or the digital art medium and he created these things and it's totally him. And you see people copying him, but he didn't really yeah. copy anybody else. He, he He's less of a collectibles person, although he does have some open edition right. ones and more of a... But like even like board board yeah. Ape Yacht Club, like the 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 effort and attention they put into all of their traits and just the overall quality, and then for them also the originality. Because I mean, some people may disagree, but I I consider them to be kind of the first they have real some of the collectible of this generation. Yeah, the, the, their art looks so good. Yeah. Um, and and for the from the two D standpoint, I don't know if there's another one that I actually look at and say, wow, like, this I like it more better. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's rare where this is in the 3d category. 
I don't want to get too hung up on this because I know we have limited time and I want to address the two other subject matters. But yeah, the quality of the art matters. And I think for me, at least when I was buying some of those things, I was like, oh, I like this thing. Now, we discussed on the show this morning how we were like, hey, um, uh, you know, it, we become more attached to the art the more that it's worth. I'm going to agree with that. But in general, um, I, I like buying things that I want to keep in my profile. And when I keep looking through there and I see stuff that I don't love because I'm embarrassed if someone walked in and saw me hanging that on my wall, I, I kind of want to get out of it. I don't love it anymore. And so as Marie Kondo says, slaughter and murder that thing violently. So which is, which is, uh, there's Isn't so, she like the like get rid of anything that doesn't bring you joy, lady? Okay, yeah. peacefully. But uh, so uh, last two hype, and then well, actually hype is the main last thing I would say, uh, which is we're looking for hype, and there's two areas indicators that we're looking for: Discord and Twitter. What are we looking for? Uh, Mechaverse. Okay, Me Mechaverse had hype. That had news-based hype, so that was that's a that had some of the all. biggest hype I've ever seen in my life. I don't think anything. <laughs> I don't even think the Nike deal was more hyped. It didn't have like no the hype and like this. Remember they like rocketed so high. It was the raffle system too. You know what I mean? Because like only some people got in via the raffle system, and there was so much FOMO if you didn't get it. Ugh. You were pissed, master of hype. I was fucking furious, dude. It was it was a great. Uh, it was a great example of hype. So that's from, uh, they had a Forbes magazine article describing them as the next board ape. Now, however they got that done, uh, <laughs> congratulations. So that that triggered the hype for the average person entering the space. A lot of those people have gotten wrecked and we've had this conversation multiple times. If you buy into the hype, you want to sell into the hype. Generally speaking, uh, you don't want to hold on to it because it's rare that a project stays on the hype Instead, uh, unless it happens organically out the gate and you have a chance to buy in at a low price, uh, it's unsustainable hype typically. Um, so Discord, I have some thoughts on what I'm looking for, but what, what like what, quantity of people, I'm looking for 10, 20,000 people basically, at least 20,000 people in there. And then volume of activity is key. Like, do they have a real community? Any other things that you guys are thinking about? And what, when you look at a Discord, what triggers you i like to see Nick, them like spamming like uh just the same thing like when 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 that means that you got some real intelligent thoughtful conversations going around in the community and it, it's it's going to work out well for you now in all seriousness i i only look at discord and twitter as if um as if like as negative indicators like if the numbers are really low that's a bad sign to me but like if the numbers look really high i mean there's all sorts of mechanics they can do to get their follower count up so and i don't go into discords that much but i do like to go on twitter and just learn a little bit about the the you know project um see the quality of their posts you know if they're just spamming giveaways left and right doesn't as feel as good to me if they have like cool teasers and content and things like that. So uh, we got to wrap But The last one to throw in there before we wrap is Twitter. And I'll just tell you straight up. There's one thing I'm looking at. It's how many people that I'm following are following that project. So if you go follow key people in this space, that's what you're looking for. And if they are following those projects, that's what, what matters. So we can wrap here. I think what we went through is, is like, you know, how we had experience with uh, flipping. Um, uh, we, we discussed the uh, seasonality. You're looking for mint and flip season. We're discussing the uh, buying at the right price. So you want to buy cheap, sub 0.5 ETH on average, just do that. Literally do nothing else. Point Below 0.25 is even better. And then we're looking at different indicators which influence the probable outcome of this which is the timing, which is pre-reveal you're looking for and actually mint or post-reveal. You're looking for the team. Do they have experience in this space? Each one of these weights can offset each other. The art, is it great? The hype, uh, Discord and Twitter, do we see like there's important people that are following along with it? And that's about it. So we ended up making some straight cash. 
in this NFT flipping season. If you got any other questions about it, post those in the comment. Remember, if you like this sort of content, smash that subscribe, lick the like button. You, you probably get some germs if you're licking the phone, but just letting you know. And this has been a great episode of the Nifty lick Alpha. The like. One last thing, a little buzzer beater here. Those Ape Kids Club, they went from 0.2 to 1.2, saw the floor of 0.5. You bought a one, you probably didn't make it. There we you go. Bought a point two example. and sold at one point two. Y'all don't make it. it. There's an, another yeah. example of that mid mid range hype. You want to avoid it. Have a great one, y'all.